AnimatedAnatomy.com. Hello and welcome to Animated Anatomy. My name is Faris and in this lesson I will talk about the shoulder anatomy. Here is the right deltoid muscle. The deltoid muscle has the origin here on the clavicle. It also has the origin on the acromion. This part of the scapula is the acromion. And also has the origin here on the spine of scapula. You can see it. The insertion of this muscle is the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. This bone is humerus. The muscle is innervated by the axillary nerve. It serves for the abduction of the shoulder, flexion and extension, dependable upon which part of this muscle is activated. Since you can see, it originates anteriorly and posteriorly from the humerus. The muscle that antagonizes this muscle was the latissimus dorsi. Here is the latissimus dorsi muscle. Another shoulder muscle that I will talk about is the teres major. This is the teres major muscle. The teres major has the origin on the posterior aspect of the inferior ankle of the scapula. The insertion here is the medial lip of the intertubercular sulcus of the humerus. Now here on this model you cannot see that sulcus, but if you watch my lessons about uh, bones in my videos, you will learn about this sulcus and all the other sulci on the bones. Now I will talk about the muscles in their shoulder that create the rotator cuff. First I will mention the teres minor because I already mentioned the teres major. Here is the teres minor muscle. The function of the teres minor muscle is to laterally rotate and adduct the arm. If you look at where it inserts, obviously when it contracts it's going to rotate the arm laterally and also because it inserts lower than the axis of this uh, joint here, it's going to make the arm adduct. Another muscle in a rotator cuff is the supraspinatus muscle. It has the name supraspinatus because it is above the spine. The origin of this muscle is the supraspinosus fossa here. The insertion of this muscle is the superior facet of the greater tubercle of the humerus. We had two tubercles on the humerus, the greater and the lesser tubercle. This muscle inserts on the greater tubercle. It is innervated by the suprascapular nerve and it serves for the abduction of the arm and it also serves to stabilize the humerus. Now we also have the infraspinatus, the muscle that is below the spine. The origin of the infraspinatus muscle is the infraspinosus fossa of the scapula. The insertion of this muscle is the middle facet of the greater turricle of the humerus. Now this is not very detailed, but just remember the middle facet of the greater turricle of the humerus. It is innervated by the suprascapular nerve and the function of this muscle is to laterally rotate the arm and to adduct the arm. It also serves to stabilize the humerus. Now remember, we had the teres minor that adducts and the, we have the supra infraspinosus that adducts, but we also had the supraspinosus that abducts the arm. Now I will talk about the subscapularis. And the subscapularis is the last muscle that I will talk about in this video, and that is exactly this muscle here. It is called the subscapularis because it originates from the subscapular fossa. And the insertion of this muscle is not on the greater tubercle, but on the lesser tubercle of the humerus. It serves to medially rotate the arm, and it also serves to stabilize the shoulder. It is innervated by the upper subscapular nerve and the lower subscapular nerve, C5 and C6. 
One more thing I forgot to say about the Terrace Minor is that it's innervated by the axillary nerve. The antagonist of the subscapularis nerve is the Terrace Minor, this muscle here, and the infraspinosus muscle here. What we offer now is very simple. We offer you my very own animated lessons. We offer you my very own anatomy atlas and 3D models in one package. Lessons. We offer you my very own anatomy atlas.